Latinos Out Loud podcast. Wow. Yo 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 the weather switched up in New York all of a sudden. Damn, it's like up summer now. What the what's yeah, going on? I got like my air conditioner on in November. <laughs> what? This is crazy. Who in the world was tanning in Central Park today? Maybe you, this, Rachel. This yeah, guy, yeah. <laughs> this guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. For real. For you real, yo. You got the ba- the beach towels out of the out of the closet. I'm going to tell you something. First of all, I never put the beach towels in the closet because I'm always in denial that it's still summer. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the beach towels or the SPF or the minus SPF in my case never go far. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Let's continue talking about it. But first, we'll do some identification. Mm. OK, pull over. Let me see some ID. OK, I don't Police. have a license here, um, but I do have ID. And my name is Rachel La Loca. Hey, what up? This is Jay Ferns at your service. Mr. Ferns. And this is Mr. Nibs up uh, on the heist, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Nibs. That's right. Conspiracy, first name. That's Hi. right. Hi. The three of us make the Latinos Out Loud podcast. It's the L, the O, and the L. I'm not sure who's Ooh. the O, but, you know, Ooh. one of us. <laughs> I'm the biggest guy. I'll L. be the O. Jesus. The wrong uh, guy. I think we take. Turns I'll take the L. Old. You know what I mean. It's all good. Mm. So, not that kind of L, because today it's all winning. Double L, son. How are you guys? What the heck is going on? We good. We good, really yo. Good chilling, chilling, man. Long week. Long week. Yeah. Long week, I, bro. Talk about it. I Easy. happen to see you guys on TV. Oh, you know, was that, that thing? Was my ch- was my TV? X. Was that something I was imagining, or did this actually happen? Pix 11, is that what you mean? Yeah. The it's... return of the morning show uh, Warriors. I don't know. Third I'm time. I'm a nickname. Third time. Third, third time. time. Wow. Third time. Yo, it felt really good. However, Jamie, it was our third time being invited back to Pix 11, but this time it was not the morning news. This time it was a newly launched show starring our girl Marisol Castro. Yo. That all rhymes, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's called New York Living, and it comes on right after Pix Eleven Morning News. How about them apples? Ooh, so it's its, its own apple. its own thing. Its own thing. We don't got to hear about like boring old world news or whatever, right? Like you That's get straight right. into the good stuff, like podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yes, and celebrating 300 episodes of a podcast where our friend was also a guest on Latinos yeah. Out Loud. Yeah, we we celebrated 300 episodes. Wow, that party was lit. I'm I'm just now recovering from that online party. You know, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> about the Virtual- day that we Rachel about the day that we were on man, with that long walk we took. That was crazy. That was crazy. You took a long walk. We lo- took a nice walk by the United Nations. We lit a, lit a nice uh, spliff and uh, kept on walking up. And Rachel took me to some nice Jewish restaurant on 70-something Street on the east side. Had some matzo ball soup. Shout Roast out to beef. the Second Avenue Delicatessen. Best matzo ball soup on the Upper East Side. Okay, yeah. shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Hello? Wait, we you're, I love when you go. <laughs> we're going backwards, I guess, because that's where we ended. <laughs> That's where we ended. And then we'll go back to where we started. We ended at the Second Avenue Delicatessen. We both got a matzo ball soup. We both, I got a knish with a schmear of deli mustard. A schmear. All right, a schmear. Frank got a pastrami sandwich. Couldn't even finish it. So much pastrami, he yelled help. I helped him a little bit, wow. just two slices. It's just too much meat, pause. Yeah. Um, did you like your experience at the Jewish Delicatessen? Of course, I like that little shot that that you had uh, with the what was it the the cream soda with the with the, wow. with the chocolate in it. Oh, that was that good. was just for you because I've been at that restaurant seven hundred and fifty thousand times and I've never gotten a free nothing. 
Okay, mm. so bring you there, the Dominican. <laughs> that's like clearly Dominican. Because me, you look at me, you're like, what is that? I'm not sure. Some kind of Latina mixed with something or other. Not sure. <laughs> but um, bring you there. We get free chocolate soda shots. Jamie, you do you like chocolate soda? It's like the old school, like I guess club soda with foxes. You bet chocolate syrup, and it's like chocolate soda. Is that like an egg cream? Is that yes? The same they have the cream? fountain soda. They have in the that old family school fountain. in yeah. that familia. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like like prefer like milky like dairy with my with my chocolate. Well, drinks. they do those. So, they do, do those. Also, they do those also with the old fountain soda. From yeah, back in the day. give me some. Give me some milk up in there, and then I. But this yeah, is yeah. like some kind of like keto chocolate soda, you know, like we don't milk. serve milkshakes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now get out of here. If the milk is made with pork, get it out of here. <laughs> it's kosher, kid. <laughs> I don't think what are you, Kanye West? Get out of here! You don't like our <laughs> Jewish food. Hey, you and Kyrie Irving, get your sneakers and go see the front door. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. Okay, wait. So we ended at the Jewish delicatessen. So now let's go backwards. Forgot yeah, we had to be there nine thirty, and you know that was interesting getting in the building, right, Frank? I showed up and I was like, Frank. Since the last time I was here, they're like changing the entrances. How do you get in? And he's just like, it's, you know, giving me the address. And I'm just like, I'm here. And you know those moments? It's like when you're in a parking lot and you can't find your car. You're like, I know my car is here, but I cannot find it. Like, I was like, I know I'm in front of the building, but I cannot find the entrance. You know when they seal off other entrances in my No, I hate that when you're looking at like where the uh, the deliveries go through and you're right. like, wait a minute, this is not <laughs> this is not the building? This is the freight entrance. Should yeah, I just freight. put on a UPS uniform and sneak in? Because I don't know how else to get in. Should I just scale the wall? What am I, Spider Woman? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, finally found it. Okay, Frank, the experience. So, Frank, got in his like suit looking very debonair well okay. you know what jamie was there that was the same suit i wore at jamie's wedding so you know Ooh. jamie was present i'm Yo. gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna read i'm gonna read i'm gonna retire it after that after the morning news show okay, okay. it's That's a it. nice actually i saw a still of you guys first before i saw the video and you guys look like you guys look very npr-ish Oh, NPR. I was like, Ooh. this looks like this like doesn't look, look like Latinos out loud. It looks like Mi Gente, Stand Up uh, podcast. Like, you know, it looks like a real serious issues podcast. Uh, Everyone who I showed Frank's picture to, they were like, that's Frank? Wow. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you look like a pop duo, like a like a Latino, like, like du duo, you know, like. Um, like Monchi Alessandra type. Like, yeah, Monchi, yeah. Monchi Alessandra. Oh, that's like bachata, but like it's... an Ashford and Simpson, but Latino. Ashford and Simpson. Oh, wow, you took it okay, back. Okay. Um. Uh, uh. Okay. Anyway, that's what. But okay. So more questions. More questions. Go. Any nerves going? You know. Well, Rachel, you were you were there, um, beforehand by yourself, right? <laughs> what were you doing? Did you take over the show? Because out of context, I saw that first. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? Like, what's happening? Is she like the new co-host of this of yeah. New York Life? <laughs> okay. York I'm so glad no one's asked me about this yet. And I <laughs> haven't even seen it myself because it was at the tippy top of the episode. Yeah. At the start of the episode. So we're there on time chilling in the like back area. And Marisol was like, come do a walk on. I'm like, I'm not mic'd up. Or you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. Am I ready? And she's yeah. like, come on. And so just like that, like Marisol is so laid back and chill. She's just so cool. She's uh -huh. like, no big deal. So of course I'm like, oh, okay, no big deal. Whatever. Let's go. I'll go on set. Okay. So I walk, <laughs> then she starts the show. And then I just pretended to be like lost in the back. Like I came out like looking oh at the wall God. and I'm just like, is this thing on? And then she goes, oh, th what, is she what did she even say in the beginning? I don't even remember. Did she say something like, like, come here, loca, or something like that. I don't remember. I don't remember, but... But she brought you... me on at the top of the show and kept me at the desk while she yeah. was, like, teasing the show. And I had to talk into her mic, into her, like, collar. Um, And then she's like, you're going to come back later? And I'm like, for sure. And then I was excused. 
You know what I'm saying? And then dismissed. And then I we came back, Frank and I. It's like That's family like, up in there. Dan, like Dan, 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 wasn't it Dan, Dan Marino? Said what's up to Jamie? Said, well, what we peoples. call him is Dan, Dan Marino, but that's definitely not his real name. We add a few extra syllables there, but it's, it's, <laughs> the joke could never go away. We is saw he, Dan. Uh, is he on? Is he on New York Living, or is he still? No, in I don't think no. so. But he was in the building. Frank oh, saw building. him, okay. and then I went back to go see him. Yo, should we shout him out right now, Jamie? We have to have him on the show. Yeah, he He's wanted saying, to. I, the he last asked time the we, we wished you the best on. on your wedding. He knew. He, he knew you were getting married. We don't even know how. He, he knew that you got about married. The wedding. Yeah. He's like yeah. Jamie got married, right? And we were like, Wow, Dan Dan and Marino, you're yeah. good. Yeah. Dan Dan and Marino is now. A dad. He's a yeah, dad. Yeah, he became a dad. Dan dad, 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 yeah. dad, 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 Marino. Yeah. He's that a dad. is Shout awesome. And his so story and yeah. how he became a dad, I think we'll leave that for when he comes on the episode. I don't want to. Oh, that's going to be crazy. I don't want to wow. ruin it. He's busy these days. Huh? Any, so let me go back because I, I was going to ask this. Um, I love this before. Q&A. Were, were there any nerves for both of you going, being on live TV again? Because, I mean, you know, live TV. If it, if it nowadays, if you do something crazy on live TV, um, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be online forever, right? <laughs> I think the only thing I was nervous about, True Talk, was that they had these bagels in the back room that we were chilling in, and I ate one, and I was really nervous about a sesame seed oh, or a poppy seed stuck in, yeah. in my teeth. That would have been hilarious. And there were no mirrors where we were. So I actually asked one of the, you know, one of the guys there, one of the producers, I'm like, look, is there anything in my teeth? And I give him the big smile. He's like, you are good. So shout out to everybody working behind the scenes at Pix11. Okay, nerves. Oh. Frank, did you have any nerves? Be honest. Nah, Tell as us. Long as I told you guys, as long as one of you two are there or both of you are there, I'm all good. It's all money. You were great. You so know, what was uh, your what were your favorite parts of the interview? Oh, great question. Um, I mean... Basically, just being there, you know, just like you said, the nerves just when show you suit up. On. Yeah. You know, Rachel text me, yo, we got this. So as soon as, as soon as I saw we got this, we good money. And I let I always let I always let you guys do what you do. You guys are motherfucking. You guys You're are great, amazing. Frank. What do you mean? That's you amazing, come in with man. The Frank so conspiracy talk. You come I'm all in. Good. Luckily, you she didn't ask great. me about no conspiracies because I had a really good one right well, there on the spot. Yeah, I didn't want to break it open right there. Luckily, she didn't ask me. On that, that type of show, you have to go with the. Right, right. You have to go with the PG conspiracies. Yeah. yeah. Or the PC conspiracies. (laughs) Pretty much, pretty much safe. Keep it safe. Keep it Um, safe. (laughs) For the morning, you know, for the morning crowd. I I have a few favorites, a few favorite parts. Okay. Uh, One of my favorite parts is like when you're on a show like this, New York Living, that has a team behind it, those beautiful, like, you know, videos that they show while we're talking, you know, they showcased video from when we were a part of the New York comedy festival. And by the way, like, you know, when sending assets, they get inundated. Like we send them so much stuff that they have to choose from. So it's great that it's timely because the New York comedy festival is actually happening next week here in New York. Um, and we oh, were a part of it with Room 28 a few years ago. And then again with Latinos Out Loud at Bodega Pizza. And they featured Mr. Nueva York, who's a good friend of ours. And it was just a really nice image to see. So I like how they do all the, the images while we're talking and stuff. Um, mm, that was dope. Another favorite part of mine is that Marisol is so good at bringing yeah. things back. So she brought mm. back Benefer, which is, yeah, <laughs> like the first time we were on there to talk about Three Kings Day. The oh, second yeah. time we were on there to talk Pochinche and stuff, right? And then she like made a call back to that. So that was really cool. I love that we are like a consistent thing and maybe people will remember us from last time. Jamie, like this is the other part of the interview that I loved. Marisol, like we were we were on the email chain talking about sadly you couldn't be there, yeah. but you really were brought up a lot. Like you were there <laughs> in spirit and nice. they love you and we love you. It's evident. And so I thought that that was really nice. That's yeah, she's awesome. Like the fact the that two biggest Mets fans, Jamie and Marisol. I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> she, said it. she blamed it on the email chain. She was like, Oh, is Jamie so like funny. still sad about the Mets losing? I'm <laughs> like, I'm over so it. Witty. I'm over. I'm I'm wearing my Mets gear, but I'm over them losing. It's a new season's over, you know, spring training and in, in in the spring. We good. 
Any other uh, questions on the picks interview? Because I love this Q and A. It could go on and on, my friend. But I know we've got to. Um, we do have to wrap up. But I, let me think of one last question. I want to wrap it all up. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, if you had your own uh, morning show, what would you call it? Oof. Not Latinos oh. Allah, obviously. If you, but think of another kind of name for the Rachel and and this also and Frank. If you have your own morning show, what mm -hmm. do you think is a good morning show name that you would call it? The Frankspiracy Morning News. Oh, oh that's no. great. Thank yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> um, that's he just goes straight to the Frank Spir It's like all Frank Spiracy right, all the time. Facts. Guys, get your coffee facts. and your croissant and get yeah. ready for some conspiracy. Oh, croissants and consp conspiracy. That works. Ooh, um, Jamie. Coffee, mm, croissants, like and conspiracy. Dang. Coffee, croissants, okay. and conspiracy. Can you think of my name? Because now mine sucks too. <laughs> like maybe you get... I mean, I Wake don't up know, with Loca. Like, Wake up with Loca. Like, like, like on the rise with Loca or something like that. <gasps> wow. I like I don't, you, you need to name something that you should you should just do like Instagram <laughs> stories in the morning and to be like, so what's up this cafe con Loca? I mean, um, I drink my coffee every morning. Bustelo. Sometimes I flip it up and I do like la llave just to get a different taste in my mouth. You know what I mean? I'm here to motivate y'all so you can have a great day. Mm -hmm. Trademark. Cafe that's con cool. Loca. Cafe okay, con get loca. ready for it. <laughs> don't. And it's with oat milk okay i'm no longer consuming milk um oh, that's no healthy. More very good mm -hmm. proud of you rachel yes. thank you so much oat milk and i got my kids drinking oat milk it's great wow okay Mine's, my show i think will be like bacon egg and cheesy with jay ferns yo because <laughs> i'm cheesy because it'll be cheesy egg. it'll be cheesy <laughs> i don't know i just that... these are great shows still workshop we'll still workshopping we're still workshop so anyways we do have a guest in this show Yes. Oh, nice. Um, nice. We're talking about oh, us being guests on a show, but we have a guest on our show. Can I say mm. one more thing before we go into that? Because, yo, Jamie, guess what? People could still check it out, even though it was live TV. Oh, yeah. That's Marisol a good point. Marisol posted it right away. It's Ooh. on the Pix11 website. And I think I should put the link in my bio just for easy access. But if you go to Pix11, it's on YouTube. They're yeah. on their game. They already put the clip up. So go search for Latinos Out Loud, Pix11, and you will find it. Sorry, yes. Jamie. I just no, that's important that. because if they're listening to this and they haven't seen it and they don't want to go see it, now they know where to go. Or so, if you're not in New York, you know what I'm saying? If you're outside of where this, this show is shown. So hopefully you can go catch it online. Yeah, yeah if you're watching L.A. living or Chicago living and you don't have New York living. Or like Tuscaloosa living. You right. Know what I mean? Tuscaloosa living. Tuscaloosa. Or Alaska living, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Anything. <laughs> um, so, anywho. Anything. It could be what's any up, living. What's up with our guest on this episode? Oh, I am glad you asked Jamie Fernandez because that's a great question. You mentioned Frank and I looked a little NPR ish on the interview on Pix 11. Right. Well, yeah. Guess what? We have an actual NPR host Ooh. on wow. our podcast. Let's go. Yo, son, uh, sons, I got to make it plural. She ain't just any NPR host. Hmm. Okay. Yo, Ana Maria Sayer is the new host of alt latino you guys know that podcast they were around before latinos out loud wow. if i'm not mistaken they pioneered the game for real for real yeah they've been going i want to say for years years wow. and years but yo this woman ana maria first of all what an energy what a joyful ball of radiance <laughs> and she also you guys was the one behind the recent tokisha tiny desk did you mm, see the Tokisha wow. Tiny Desk? Yes. The Tiny Desk Tokisha. Oh, however, that. you want to call it. Okay, Tokisha on Tiny Desk is just huge. And this, I, I was hoping she was the one behind it. It was confirmed on this interview. So we talked to Ana Maria, and she just brings a really fresh perspective, you know, to the audience. She knows and is very vocal and brilliant about expressing Latinidad, the importance, the issues. Music is her thing. It's wow. just really exciting. And also, we love podcast to podcast love, don't we? Our audience needs to know that Ana Maria Sayer is the new host of Alt Latino, an iconic show that we owe a lot to, you know, Definitely. for for doing what they've done. And so it was really nice to have her on Latinos Out Loud, and we bugged out. It was fun. Right, Frank? So let's no just doubt. 
Let's just get into it, you guys. Let's go Let's right do in. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. This is the Latinos Out Loud podcast. In case anybody Ooh. needs some identification, I should be wearing a Hello, My Name is sticker, which I've been doing lately a lot for some reason. I've been going to a lot of Are events you? where it's like, yeah, it's weird. I, I'm like, it's weird. In the past couple of weeks, I've been to three events where I've had Hello, My Name is sticker. I you know, like the days of identifying yourself by sticker are just not not what they used to be. I don't. I, I don't think it's happening anymore. I thought I, I didn't really like it. I didn't really like to have a label on me. You know what I'm saying? See what I did there? Okay, look, this is the Latinos Out Loud podcast. I'm so excited. This is a really interesting episode, guys. This is more podcast to podcast love. This is what I'm talking about. Latina to Latina, Latino to Latino. All of us need to just show this love on the daily, if possible, mm -hmm. if presented mm -hmm. with the opportunity. And that could just be a quick text to your homegirl, you know, elevating them a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. or, I love it that. Could, or it could be where I, Rachel La Loca from the Latinos Out Loud podcast, get the pleasure of interviewing the new host of an iconic podcast, Alt Latino. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ana Maria Saida. Did oh I say your last God. name right? It's Sayre? Sayre, actually. Sayre. Sayre. I made it so Latino. I make everything Latino, though. I'm like, Sayre. <laughs> I added an accent mark. <laughs> Sayre, thank you so much. Sayre, loud and proud. Ana Maria is the new host of All Latino. Yes, oh girl. Oh, my God. You are not kidding about the energia. You, like, bring it. I told you, it's nine in the morning for me. I'm like, <laughs> okay, we're here. Let's go. I'm like the Latina rooster right now for you. Caw, 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 caw. Uh, I want to just say congratulations on um, becoming thank a new, you, thank you, thank you. like, thank you. Ooh, yeah, such an iconic very... podcast because it's been crazy. Alt Latino was around before Latinos Out Loud was even an idea. Yeah, Alt Latino been... was one of the shows that I really and continue to respect look oh. up to and I'm thankful for paving the way for Latinos in the mm -hmm. podcast space I have oh. the utmost respect I'm so proud of you I don't know you very well oh, but I, I know think I'm like well we just met but thank you can I be <laughs> proud of you is that weird no that's not weird okay that's really that's lovely in yeah. an unweird way I'm very proud of you I think this is amazing please tell me how you got here how did this opportunity tell me everything about what led you to get here and then this your excitement and then life. your excitement around it please take the mic oh wow um <laughs> so oh where do I begin you know starting with the excitement it is with no shame that I tell everyone that my best friend is a 64 year old man because truly Felix is we just like that's the thing is so is on, on the mic off the mic he, we just like all day long we're like cheese me cheese me cheese me that's how it started right like that was just us and that's what we did and um just one of the most quality human beings Love really that. like whatever you think he is like few persona like on the thing it's like that's who he is just in life he just is that person um I tell him all the time he and my actual Theo would be best friends because they so many of the same things um but yeah, I mean, I just, you know, all that thing has been around for a lot of years. It's been 12 years, over 12 years Incredible. that Felix started the show. Incredible. Um, oh my yeah, gosh. Insane. Like a true pioneer. And also, before podcasting was even a thing, like he was like, I love the music. I love, I'm really passionate about this thing. He's working at NPR as a, as a culture reporter. And he's like, oh, what if I just, I want to do this thing on the side. What if I do it on this podcast? Like, what wow. if that could be the way that I do it? So it was one of the first four podcasts that NPR had, just kind of something he started. Crazy. Mind boggling. Mind boggling. Now, like, now there's like millions. <laughs> I know. And you have to understand too, he just like, he just did it. Like he just, made it happen and, and for 12 years he's just been making it work and making it happen and so when I came on board like okay it, it, me being co-host was never just not it, it was just like what if we revamp what if we relaunch because it was like 
Felix has this whole beautiful thing, right, that he's made that is this whole world of like that music and culture and all these different things that I know I, before I, I started working with the show, that's what I've really connected with, right? Like I, I point to these- We know the brand. Like, we all yeah, know the brand. Yeah, we know the yes. brand. And it's like, oh my God, like you're like listening to the show and you're like, I didn't even know this about myself or my family or like the, anything, right? Because you grow up in your bubble of what it is that is your experience with your Latinoness, whatever that means. And like, mm. you're not thinking about the whole large, amazing, like, community of a diaspora of like it's just so much bigger and so every time you you get into the music you can have that experience right and so with Felix it's like he was putting that into a show and putting it out there and I was like oh my god like there's so much here like can we revamp relaunch do something around this where we're like putting all of that at the forefront so that's kind of what started and then it was just like through conversations and spending all this time you like went on hiatus just like talking about all these big things of like what is the show and what does it mean Ooh, that's to people deep. and that could get really deep to and all this stuff. and that well, could be conversation yeah. for hours thing. right like that could be never mm-hmm. ending please tell me more I I love yeah. this type of stuff well, yeah because that's the thing is right like I, I say this all the time where I'm like working on a show like this it's like putting my corazón, like my family, like my everything into the content, right? Like it's because it's so close to home and it's so mm-hmm. personal. And you like, you have to like look at yourself mm-hmm. and like introspect, right? To like think about what's yeah. going to resonate with other people. And so I think that's like, it was like so many conversations of me being like, no, this is what matters to my family. And this is what matters to me. And these are the things that I connect with. And so through all these conversations, ultimately, it just kind of was like, well, what if I would just like cook this and like talk about it to like on the mic? And then that's, an opp- that's a real opportunity for self-reflection too. Yeah. It's really to me an honor and a privilege when you get to work on a project that really allows you to get to know yourself better. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for also pieces of you personally to come out. Right. Ha- look, a little uh, having worked on like, corporate brands that like I cared about but weren't part of my (laughs) alma you know like I can't Mm -hmm. say it's part of my Mm -hmm. soul who I am who my family is Mm -hmm. like that's really an honor and a privilege that not everyone gets to get it is it is it's it's an honor and a privilege and it's also slightly fine because you're like I'm representing me, I'm representing my family, I'm representing like me comunidad, I'm representing all of these things. And I'm doing that and also trying to like say that I can speak to the experiences. And I'm not trying to say that, right? Like I'm not trying to say that I can speak to the experience of every single person who's yeah. a part of like all of like, it's Im- Latin American impossible. It's, it's impossible. impossible. It's impossible. Well, I'm then like, again, how in the world would I know what it's like to grow up <laughs> Peruvian? And you know, I just like I don't, right? But it's definitely that feeling of like, but I want to at least, to the best of my ability, like somehow make that person feel included or feel spoken to. And so, like, figuring out how to like lean into yourself and and represent yourself right, and then also like try to include other people in that is like oh my yes. god Ana, like, Ana yeah. Maria the the mantra of Latinos out loud has always been and continues to be to move Latinos forward while making them laugh mm. that's always been the criteria for the guests that we bring in for the subject matter mm-hmm. how we mm-hmm. approach the episode. You know what I'm saying? Is single Latino A E E X Y Z? No. I I I'm in the we're in the lab yeah. here, Ana Maria and I. We're like mm-hmm. fixing test tubes mm-hmm. and like and I think it's explosion. impossible. Sometimes oh yeah, explosion. You got yeah. the like black poof of smoke on your face, like uh-huh. in the cartoons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shut up, mix like, tetrahydrochloride with uh, oxygen. <laughs> Yeah, but let's put yeah. this back in the beaker. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pero I would like to tie that into my question of tell me about the relaunch. What is the rebranding like for all Latino? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like 
it's so hard. It's so like up here in the clouds. But I think, like I said, kind of like Felix is doing this wonderful thing where he has these moments of connection. He has all of these um, really beautiful ways that he is bringing people in to to this community through music. I think the music is the most like revealing just the way that you connect with people without having to say anything in many ways. Like, it's such a passion you know, point for Latinos. It's it right brings here. us together. It's a, it does unite us, you know. Exactly. It's, it is truly, like, I think one of the most core Latino things is to be Amen. connected with music because you're, you're listening since day one. It's part of the family since day one. And so there's so much opportunity space within the music to, to connect and to find joy and to find also work through pain and all of these things. And so there's that. And then there's what Felix is doing, which is telling that story and like actually putting words to some of that and like teaching about the history with some of that. And so it's like, okay, we just want to take those moments and like make that the show and give people an opportunity, young people even an opportunity to really like find something there for themselves. Like especially young people who are seeking we're trying to build community through music. Yes. Um, so that was kind of the goal. And I think it was really about paring down what the show was. Like the show has covered so many different things in arts and culture and movies and books and everything. Felix is like, loves to do everything. And so we were like, in San Cocho, que es sabroso, que rico. so stoked about everything. He's like, love it all. He loves it all, right? And so I was like, we just came back to the stories, back to the musicians, back to the artists as people, and really had these conversations focused on like, where did this come from? Like, when, what in your brain made you become this person who makes this beautiful thing and can speak to people? And that has been so revealing because these artists are like, oh, their souls are like, every time I speak to them, I'm like, you have so much in you. And like to be a person that can produce something that connects people, you got to be somewhere on a higher plane. I don't know, but it's been really, really wonderful to to have that and to hear about those experiences. I'm very excited for you. That's very exciting for us as the consumer as well as far as what we have to look forward to. Let's talk about these artists, girl. You have spoken to some of our faves that are molding the space. Mm-hmm. Rosalia, Mm -hmm. Barruco, Mm -hmm. you've had some moments with these people. And I also want to talk about Tiny Desk. Oh, there's so much to talk about. All right, get organized, Rachel, get organized. All right. Okay, look, these artists that you've spoken to, I would like to hear about some of those common denominators that you find when speaking to these Latin artists and about their stories and what differentiates Mm -hmm. us a bit from everybody else in that in that context. Yeah. Oh, I've been so lucky um, to speak, to just pick their brains. I mean, it's like, who am I? I think I'm Rosalia or Chaparruco. I bet you're Ana Maria Sayer. That's who you are. Okay. Say what? Ana Maria Sayer. Just saying. <laughs> thank you. I need thank to be you. Your encouragement? Like, just I need call to have me. you in my ear. Right before Text me. Call me. Hit like, me up on the gram. I'm here I for will, it. I will. I will. I'll send you a um, voice note every morning if you need that's me. That's what I need. Like, yeah, there was that voice note once again. Estoy aquí para ti. Pero dale, I, I, this is um, a great convo. I'm telling you, I'm going to shut up. I may have to go on mute because I just want to listen. <laughs> no, I'm like, keep it coming. Give me more commentary. It keeps me going. I'm like, okay, I'm here. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, okay, there's got to be something in the music, right? Baseline, like we got to we gotta have something in the music that's like, love it we you know connect with it there's a story here there's something to that so that's like a baseline just for all the artists is like Mm. the the music has to be there and then I think beyond that you know everyone's got to really think about like okay what is this artist saying with their music in this moment right like why now why in this world that we're living in like what are they saying like speaking to something specific about 
um, the Latino experience or the diaspora, whatever it might be, that we can hear in the music and that we feel like there's something that a conversation could bring out about mm-hmm. them and that, that music that that would feel like something that that we think about the audience a lot, right? Like something that the audience that we're trying to speak to could could get something from. And so mm-hmm. I think. I don't know. I've found in all of these conversations, like mental health comes up a lot, like oh. family comes up a lot, like a lot of things where once you get into the nitty gritty, love that. why an artist is who they are and why they're making what they're making, like these are topics that just have to come up because it's part of who they are, right? Like it's this is how they're this is how they figured out how to move through the world, like. This is how they figured out how to be okay and how to make sense of where they came from. And all of these things is through making this music. So when you step back and you're like, okay, we're hearing this in the music. What does that mean to you? Almost every time it's like, it, it comes up. Yeah. That is a great answer. Um, girls, sometimes I hear music and I'm not a music video director or a storyboarder or anything. Some of these songs sound like feature films Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that there's a lot of the same stories, not specifically, but about the struggle, you know, what we've been subjected to Mm -hmm. as Latinos, things that happen in our motherland that's Mm -hmm. common to us across Latin America and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And I almost envision these movies in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah. This song by Tokisha for sure is a freaking, maybe a porn, maybe a porn movie, but, or maybe some XXX stuff, but this is a freaking movie that I'm seeing in my head play out right now, just from this song. Oh yeah. I, um. Okay. That is, I'm segueing myself. Tiny desk, Tokisha. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm glad you brought it up. Woo! Did I bring it up? I've been dreaming about it every day yes. since it came out. <laughs> I'm a huge fan and not only because of the music like yes I work out to a Tokisha playlist sue me you know what I'm saying <laughs> yes <laughs> well, um, of course. but yo not only because of the music Ana Maria but also because she's the voice of the underrepresented yeah. she's the voice of change she's a culture shifter mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I guess I don't know what tiny desk criteria is and I would love for you to walk the LOL Leros, which is our LOL hive through what uh-huh. tiny desk is as a it's become a franchise right um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then were you involved did you work on the Tokyo oh my god I'm gonna die I'm gonna die I'm gonna die right now okay look I need yeah, to know okay. all all the tiny desk details, all the tiny details, big. All the tiny details. Tell me everything. And congratulations. What a great idea. You're a genius. This was so smart. Thank you. So smart. (laughs) Well, so backing up, this is year two that we have done a complete takeover of the tiny desk for Latinx Heritage Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, our month whatever you want to call it I don't know we take it right I'm like if you got if you want to give me a takeover for it I'm here for it um so we did last year we did 10 and they were all home concerts because we were in the in the building back in the building so we did 10 concerts from home it was awesome it was like oh I'm like yeah let's do it and also like just aside for people who don't know the time audience is like extremely global and extremely lucky. Like we oh. have such yeah. So our audience is I wish I tell had me more. For you. Tell me um, more. Yeah, Broad I think strokes, it's, it's over anything. 50% people of color. The audience. Yeah. Wow. Literally for tiny. Um Love and that. we have like a huge percentage of like a, a Latin American audience, truly. Like I think. Oh God. And these, huh. you know, these numbers may have changed and also this could be wrong. So, you know, I'm saying it here, but don't it's fine. It's fine. And I think seven of our 10 top countries. So like we have the U S or da, 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 seven of them are in Latin America. And I think number two, still so like behind the U S number two is Brazil. 
than the most viewers in any given country. So like wow. really huge Latin American audience, people who are, are listening, watching the Tiny Desk, found the Tiny Desk and were just in it for, because you know, Latinos, we love music, right? So like it makes sense. And so one of the things that I said with these takeovers is I was like, listen, like, yes, we want to represent. Yes, we want to bring, you know, Latin music or just Latinx presence to the tiny desk, right? But so this is only what makes sense. We're serving an audience that's already there. Like we were giving them content and giving them artists and giving them music that they care about. And they're already here. So like, we might as well do it. Yes, so, satisfy yes, the appetite. That's what. Yeah, if that's who's yeah. there. Wow. So then, year two, I was like, okay, how are we going to one off ourselves? We can't. But we came up with a whole other list for whatever reason. A little bit of <laughs> so I'm like, I you know, I love our series producer. He's incredible, and he was like, okay, Anna, like, come on. And I was like, the people need Tokisha. Yes, and tell them. I tell was like, them. she is a figure in the computer. <laughs> she is moving things. She's shaking things. We got to have Tokisha. And so I'm like literally smacking things. I'm so passionate about this. So we brought her on. Um, I was lucky enough to produce that show. It was amazing. Oh I, she's an absolute icon. There's a lot of people mad about it. I, uh, yeah, we got to talk about that too. Yeah. But, Me imagino. But, but I'm like, like, this is something that I was saying to people is I was like, that is why she's a mover. She's a shaker because yes. she creates this response in people. And conversations. Like, she creates conversations yep. within the community, outside of the community. And that's what we want. Like, I think with the tiny desk to your point is like what is it that you all are looking for like they they have to be musically there but they also have to be people that like them in this space it's gonna be something you've never seen before from them because you know you've never seen Tokisha singing and playing and performing and arranging for music in the company like incredible. that's crazy and yeah, with her band with the so accompaniment. I was so gonna good. say, I yeah. want to hear about oh, the yeah. band. The band was awesome, and <laughs> she looked it like was she was first. having fun. Yeah, when they sent me, you know, they sent me like the arrangement ahead of time, and like heard, I was like, "You're putting cumbia on this? Like, wow. you're." I was like, every single song, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, this is gonna be, and that's the point, right? Is to do something that feels different, and and specifically for celebrating you know, Latino culture for celebrating the sounds of the diaspora, right? Like yeah. a lot of times when I've brought Latin artists to the time, that's what we work through is like, how can you represent a little more of yourself and home and your family in this arrangement? And that's incredible to see because you're like, yeah, you're really going back to yourself Art. and you're going back to your roots. And that's, you don't have to say anything about that. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to like, it's right there like cumbia on a tokisa like classic like that's right there for someone to be like oh my god she's really represented and that was just a really cool thing her face said it all if you haven't seen the performance Eloeleros, look up the tiny desk collaboration with tokisha that recently came out for latinx heritage month 2022 i am so happy i was hoping you'd worked on it as much as you did i assumed so <laughs> But you were like, please, I need to hear from someone. I took about a risk. This. I took a risk. I was like, let me ask okay. her. And then look at that. I'm so glad you gave such a colorful answer to that oh, question. Yeah, I could talk about Tiny Desk all day long, for sure. Hey, look, Anna, I cannot wait to hear more from you and Alt Latino. I, I guess I'll ask one last question. Um, and I asked this about, I asked this to a lot of our guests. Because mm -hmm. there are people out there that could use a little bit of oomph, some encouragement right now, some words of wisdom on how to navigate their careers. You know, I had an awakening in 2015 where I did a complete career shift from mm -hmm. corporate to comedy. And there's more and more of us Latina entrepreneurs that are sprouting. And no mm -hmm. matter what fields you're in, we, we've got to be movers and shakers 
just mm -hmm. to refer back to that term from earlier. We all have to be, we have a duty as bold Latinas in 2022 mm -hmm. to be movers and shakers. So what are some words of wisdom that you can share with our Eloeleros aspiring to navigate a career path, maybe similar to yours, mm -hmm. or at least along, along the same trajectory as yours? same direction oh man uh I wish it were you know I think it's simple and it's not right because like life is real and and finances are real and pressure mm. is real and feeling like you gotta you know you got nothing to fall back on right like that's real too and and I I, I don't want to just blindly encourage people like go oh, and and follow your passion and it's all going to work out great. And, you know, cause it, there's all kinds of iterations, I think of ways that we can be happy in our life. And I, I truly believe that. Like, I believe that if I were in this job, in this moment, in this career, like I could have been in 10 other things that mm. I could have loved and found my voice in and found daily happiness in. I'm just really lucky that I get to do this. But I think that the best that you can and the best in the in the mo way that makes the most sense for you, like all of the things that excite you and interest you is the best thing I can say. Like if you're not vibing with something and you can try to pivot, you know, because to me, there's no use in trying to slog through something because you feel like you should be doing it if you have the opportunity to just do the things, whether it's in your job or just on the side or whatever it might be, like things that light that little fire in your chest that you're like, oh, I just like lost my breath a little bit because this is so cool. The mariposas this is, this is... in the belly, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly like that because that's, I think that's the key in life is you just have to do the thing that, that feels like it's, it's like a little extra something. It doesn't have to be like, oh my God, I'm I'm absolutely in love, obsessed with this thing, but just like, oh, this this got me a little peppier in my step. This got me like thinking about things a little more. This got me just feeling a little lighter. Anything that can make you feel a little lighter. I think that's the thing. You just gotta go for that. I love that you said that. That's those are great words of advice that people need to hear. Thank you so much. Anna, where can people follow you? Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm on Twitter, Anna Sayer. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Anna Maria Uh, those are the main places. Hit me up. You can always like slide into my DMs and ask me questions or whatever it might be. I love talking to people. I love meeting people. Anyone in LA, hit me up. Um, Ooh, but, yeah. okay, LA. Well, it's the reverse. It's okay, but, yeah. LA. Okay. And that's no. Sayer, S-A-Y-R-E. I just want to spell it out. Um, Anna, thank you so much for your time. And felicitaciones. Felicitaciones. Oh, yes, yes. I party. Oh, I party. I party. On Latino. <laughs> we love you guys. And we thank Felix and the brand and NPR mm -hmm. for paving a path for all of us. Thank you so much for your time on the show please thank come back. you oh my god please have me back this is the best way to start my morning pero mira ana <laughs> thank you so much for your time have a wonderful day and please please come back like i said okay we thank you i will back. i will i will thank you so much ana maria yes. hey. that was a great interview she's doing her thing and um check her out and npr you know what is you know you know the name npr all latino wow. I mean, this is a real uh, trailblazer, huh? Yeah, she's doing her thing, and and uh, I think you're gonna be hearing a lot more from her in the future. Oh wow. yeah! And oh yeah! Yeah! We have these incredible guests that like uh, could come back and like do things, you know? Like we need to think about that. Like these guests are so good. We never want to stop talking. We need to just have parties, more online parties where we invite uh, everybody back. We're like some cool segments. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Pool but parties. We have to like <laughs> rent out a pool area and just have pool parties. Oh wow. my God. Cool Be parties. Nice. But pool parties too. Can we do an online pool party? I don't think anybody's ever done that. But everybody has to own a pool. That's yeah, they could just watch us. <laughs> they could just watch us swimming in the pool while we, <laughs> we conduct the interviews in the pool. We have. Wait a minute. <laughs> I love this. Wait a minute. <laughs>
LOL poolside? I love oh, this. Oh, snap. It's a poolside <laughs> chat. It's a poolside chat. Can we poolside chat. Please? Who oh, owns shit. a pool? Who owns a pool, guys? <laughs> Invite us over your house. Has to be a fly pool. I'm not going to know Mr. Turtle or nothing that's like above the ground. Has to be in ground, heated, okay? Maybe a diving board, maybe a slide. That would be nice, but that's an accoutrement that I don't really need. But come on, it needs to be below. It needs to be in ground. Come on, son. You want an official like? one? I bring out like the above ground pool people. Come on, bro. Nice. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, this was a great episode, a great interview. Um, yeah. How are we gonna end this though? With mm -hmm. a kelo okay? Go. It's time for Que Lo Que. Hey, yeah. Yo, we've been rocking out with that song by El Chevo. Shout out to El Chevo. Shout out to Pills. That Que Lo Que song to me doesn't get tired. I still rock out. I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, I don't see you dancing, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hello, Eleros, let us know. If you want to hear a new Que Lo Que segment intro, hit us up and let us know at We Are Latinos Out Loud. I'm serious. Ooh. I'm serious. I want to know. Mm. I I'm still good with it, but... I also want to hear what the LOLeros have to say. I want to give a, sh a, a quick shout out to Daddy, our very own Daddy Ling. She sang at the Nets game. I would have preferred to be at the Nick game, but you know they had her at the they had her at the Nets game. So uh, I heard Apollo there when you <laughs> after I said Nets. But he anyway, wanted to sing also. So oh, he Apollo, to sing. I'm sorry, you're just not alto enough. Get out yeah. of here. <laughs> he has some nice uh, Daddy Link to sing. She could, she could, she could blow, as they would say. So Is shout out Daddy to her. Is Daddy Link from Morenita Podcast? Yes, our very. Sonoro? I just said our, our very own Sonoros. Is Daddy Link? Yes, That's she sang at the Nick game, at the Nets game, should I say? I wish Brooklyn, it would have been the Nick. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. But uh, sh shout out to her. Shout out to Sonoros. <laughs> uh, she Love sang that. some uh, some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. She sang very nice. That's wow. incredible. That's, That's cool. so yeah. dope. Um, I guess it's my turn. Um, like always, we got love for days for yellow.com, the Latino men's Ooh. news and lifestyle yes. platform. If you are itching to see Wakanda forever, Ooh, Yero ex Ooh. yeah, Yero explains the movie's Latino futurism. Interesting. That is going to make your jaw drop. Oh, I like Latino futurism. That yeah. sounds sexy. I don't oh, even quite Mexican know. Dude. I don't even quite know dude. if I know what Latino futurism is, but I'm gonna have to go to Yiddo.com and find out. <laughs> but it sounds cool, and it's it and it's gonna be in Wakanda forever. So that means it's gonna be like awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, the new Namor, he's uh, Latino, right? So he's about to blow up. Yeah, and Namor, I don't know if you know the comic books, but Namor is like a badass in the comic books. Um. He's almost as strong as, as Thor, pretty much. So Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. That dude don't you don't play with that dude. Um, so anyway, check it out, yellow.com. And uh and uh yeah, follow you can follow me at Jay Ferns, Instagram, J underscore Ferns, Twitter, although I don't know about Elon Musk trying to Yo, charge Yo, eight dollars oh, son a month, bro. No, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in another episode. That's although, a whole episode. If, if he's only charging people that had a blue check and I didn't have one. So in the I'm mass still... <laughs> exodus of celebrities from Twitter is interesting. Yeah, that's a wow. lot. There's a lot to unpack there, but maybe in the next episode we'll talk about it. Um what that is it? That is it. And Rachel, I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. Why are you looking yeah. at me? Who's looking gotta, at me? You? Who? You got to stick the landing. You got to stick the landing. <laughs> okay, Bella Caroli, here I go. Um, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to try to get a 10 on the floor exercise. But don't wow. come to me for the uneven bars. Just my life is as uneven as the bars. Okay? All right, Mary Lou. Here we Thank you. Okay. I love that Mary Lou Retton <laughs> reference. I'll take a Mary okay, Lou Okay, Dominique Mochianu. Oh, I'll take that one too, Dominique Mochianu. All right? Yes. I feel very Emocianu right now. Okay, look, I'm not going to get too emotional now, but um, I got to moderate a panel a few days ago for the Dominican Film Festival that's in New York right now. So that was nice. really amazing. You guys... It was just, it was amazing to be there at Alianza Dominicana. Shout out to Uptown. Shout out to everybody involved in the Dominican Film Festival. I must also shout out the other, the panelists. 
that were up there with me. Our friend, our dear friend, Catherine Castro was on yeah. the panel. She had the opening night film called Week. Then another shout out goes to Maite Bonilla, who was also on the panel, a lovely director, very talented, and what wonderful energy, right, Frank? You were there, like the energy up there. Did, it, it wasn't just me, right? Like there was... No. Oof, it, it was, was some kind buzzing, of buzzing, bu buzzing like a. I was gonna say vibrating. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. vibrating. Okay, and that's not just the travel thing that I travel with when I need to. Okay, mm -hmm. so travel. then the other actress up there was Sarah Jorge Leon, who is an amazing actress. I mean, she's in a ton of things and also just just doing marvelous things in and for the Dominican Republic. I think that's one thing that all these ladies had in common is that like really pushing the culture forward via film, filmmaking, directing, acting. It's marvelous. The heavy so, hitters. Um, right? Yeah. Thank you, Armando and Henry of the Dominican Film Festival for opening up the doors and allowing me to just have so much fun on the mic that night. We turned it from a panel into a party, from panel Ooh. to party. I got up there and I was just like, all right, guys, I know this is a panel and we should be talking like, oh, so tell, you know, with that kind of tone. I was like, but aquí hay un party. I'm Bye. sorry. The panel was at eight o'clock. So I was like, we're going. This is going to be more like a late night show than it is a panel. So if everybody's down. But Jamie, it was so much fun. Um, And also, please follow me at Rachel La Loca. There's other stuff that's going on. Other festivals coming up that, you know, just try. I try to like post the things, you know, but I'm not always on the thing. But yo, shout out to all the creators doing wonderful events yes. and with their films in film festivals. Shout out to Eunice. Eunice is killing it with Rowan the Stardust. Her film is now Os is now an Oscar contender. Um, wow. So shout out to Elvis Nolasco, who stars in her film Rowan the Stardust. That's killing it in the festival circuit right now. Um, it's really, really amazing. Eunice is a friend for a long time. Isn't it amazing when you see the come up, you see the glow up. You see it. You're right there. Everybody, everybody blowing up. Okay. <laughs> this has been another episode of Latinos Out Loud. We want to thank the LOLeros and, of course, everybody behind the scenes. Shout out to you. Can we make some shout outs for behind the scenes, peeps? Let's we have do it. I know. No. Claro. He out there somewhere. Shout out to Paco de Pablo. P -P. Yeah. Paco de Pablo in the house. Yeah. <laughs> also, shout out to Josie, producer. Yeah, of Josie. Set. Okay, Josie Melendez. Josie Melendez in the building. And of course, Augusto. Augusto, Augusto. on the editing. We love it. You Augusto. guys wouldn't sound the way you'd sound if it wasn't for Augusto. No Augusto way. makes everything sound so good. So good. So good. So good. You guys, thank you so much. Um, everyone, it's Sonoro and everyone out there listening to the Latinos Out Loud podcast and also talking nice about us when we're not in the room. I really appreciate you so much. All mm -hmm. right. On that note, we out.